This video guides you behind the scenes in the planning and building of a real life online challenge in a Mighty Network. Sometimes these challenges are called quests or other names for a group experience in your network. You'll see what it's like as a member to be involved and to do the challenge, as well as looking at things from a host view is how I set it up. And we'll look at how you can monitor the member participation and their progress as they move through the challenge. We'll also be looking at how I used AI to spark ideas and save time. I'm Marcia Chadley, here to help you be successful with your Mighty Network. If you've been wanting to run a challenge and aren't quite sure how, or you've run some and you're looking for ideas and ways to improve what you've already done, this video is for you. Let's walk through the steps I took to make this successful challenge in my Mighty Network. The first thing that I did in setting up this challenge was to choose a topic. I want my topics for a challenge to be very simple, easy for me to set up and for the participants to go through and to learn something from. And I want it to be directly tied to a result that the people in my network are trying to achieve. In my case, people in my network are Mighty Network hosts, and one of the things they would like to do is to be able to manage their network more easily and more successfully. So I chose the Mighty Network search feature. Pretty simple, not a whole lot involved with it, but it's a powerful and often overlooked tool that many Mighty Network hosts don't use and don't know how to leverage in managing their network. I explored different things I could do in this challenge with ChatGPT. I gave it this prompt. You're a Mighty Networks host. What are the top 10 things you wish you knew about searching in a network? And the results gave me ideas. Now I'm always watching for errors because even this ChatGPT based on Mighty Networks information doesn't always understand the nuances of what the platform does. The Mighty Networks team built a community design version of ChatGPT that is really handy to use when you're doing things with your Mighty Network. At this stage of planning the challenge, before I could start building it, I thought more about what I wanted to do, who it was for, and how I actually wanted it to unfold. So I decided that this challenge, this particular challenge, would be for everybody in my network, both my free and my paid members. Often my challenges are only for my paid members. I also decided that I wanted the challenge to cover two weeks. It's a good length of time for me. I don't get tired of it. It's a good length of time for my participants because they don't get tired of it or overburdened. Speaking of that, I wanted this to be a low impact challenge. I decided I wanted each action in the challenge to be doable in five, maybe 10 minutes, depending on how deeply someone wanted to look at it. So my plan for the challenge in the two weeks, each of the two weeks, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, there would be a new action step, take five or 10 minutes, and then on Fridays, a quiz. Short quiz to review what happened during the week, reinforce that learning, and tied to the quiz would be a badge. So when people finish the quiz, they could get the badge, have a little bit of encouragement and um, celebration for what they've already done. So I thought the badges would help people want to complete the challenge and also to help people want to finish the challenge, which is often one of the challenges we have as a host is getting people to work through everything to encourage them to finish. I also set up prizes for this particular challenge. I chose actions for the first four days and drafted what I thought a post for the first action would be. Then I came back to chat GPT with this prompt. I'm creating a simple challenge to help Mighty Network hosts understand how to use the search functionality. Here's a draft for the first day of the challenge. What are your thoughts? And pasted in my draft. As I worked with Chappie GPT on all four days, I adapted the content, started filling in each day as a lesson in the table of contents, got through the first four days, and I wanted to find out what kind of ideas that, Mighty ne that the Mighty Network ChatGPT here would have for a quiz that covered these four days. So here's the prompt I use for that. I'll put each day into a lesson of a table of contents. I'd like to follow these four days with a quiz. Can you suggest two possible questions from each day? They need to be multiple choice questions with one correct answer. 
So I did a lot of changes with what was suggested here by ChatGPT, but it really inspired me and helped me to set up the quiz. At this point, I needed ideas for the name for the challenge. I had one, but I didn't think it was really good. I wanted something that would be interesting and encourage people to do it, even though they really aren't often interested in search itself. So I needed something that drew their attention. I didn't want it just to be clickbait, but I wanted it to look interesting. So I prompted again ChatGPT, and I went back and forth for quite a while and thought about it before I settled on the name Search Wizardry Challenge. Here's the challenge space from a member's viewpoint. So this is what someone would see when they joined the challenge before we officially started. Well, we all started on the same Monday. Before it started, they would come in. I used a page feature here to welcome them in, let them know what they're gonna do, when it starts, what the prizes will be, and what to do to come back and get started and win. If they looking around here at the page feet at the different features in this space, they'll see that there's the challenge steps. Right now there's nothing in there because we haven't started. And then there's also a chat room, which if they want, they can start using. Most people will probably come in, read through this, and then come back on the day it starts. Let's go behind the scenes and look at what this same space looks like for me as a host as people are joining. You see the page feature here, just like we look at it, it's visible. In the table of contents, I can see content because I'm seeing things that I have not unlocked or made visible yet for when it starts. Once it starts, I'm gonna turn off this page feature. I'm gonna turn on the overview section, which has some of the same information in it in a more abbreviated way, so that when someone comes in after it starts, they're not gonna see this page feature. They'll pop into the overview, and then they'll see the different days that are unlocked. So I'm gonna set this up so that things unlock on Monday, this, this particular um, section, and this lesson will unlock, and then each of the next days, another lesson will unlock. On Friday, the quiz will unlock, and I'm actually gonna add in a way for people to get a badge after the quiz that unlocks too. If you, search, if you scroll down here, you'll notice that these are just fleshed out. So as people were getting started signing up for this, I had most of the first week in place, I was still editing it, and the thoughts for the second week were still a bit nebulous and I was working on what I wanted to do. I can do all this behind the scenes as people are joining and then as they start participating. Here's the view of a member who's in the midst of working this particular challenge. You can see they come into the challenge, see the different actions in the challenge, they know right where they're at. And here is the chat room where people are talking and sharing about the challenge. Let's go back and look at the next step for this particular member. If we look the first week, all of these have been finished and completed. In the second week, they're working on this step right here. So we'll open it up, take a look at what they're supposed to do. After they finish that, they'll mark this step as complete. If they want, they can go right on to the next step. The next step is the weekly challenge. So they'll start and take the quiz. Once they've finished the quiz, I've got this set up so they get to see what the correct answers are, what their score was, whether or not they passed or failed. And then they're finished or they can retake the quiz. And now that the quiz has been completed, they can pick up their second badge just by opening up this space. And this member has now received their badge. The badge is right here in their profile. It's nice to provide next steps for people for when they finish the challenge, and I've done that here in another lesson. As the challenge is happening, you're gonna to wanna to look and see what's going on. What are people doing? What kind of progress are they making? Let's look at some of the places that you can see things. Inside the Mighty Network, you can look at the member list and you can see a bit, you get kind of an overview, percentage complete, last completed, last viewed, and you can download this information to look at it. Another way to look at progress is to look at the badges that people have received. 
So if you're in this space, you can sort by particular badges. In this case, let's look at my first badge. And I can see the people that have already received this badge. You can also download the responses from each quiz and have them sent to your email. This download will let you know how many times a member took the quiz, as well as what scores they got and how they answered it. Looking at Mighty Networks Insights can provide you more information on what's going on inside the challenge, including what a particular member is doing. So you want to look at the table of contents for that particular space, all kinds of great charts, how much is completed, what lessons are completed, what quizzes are being done, and also member progress. For a particular member, you can open up and look at a detailed view of what they're doing inside the challenge. This really lets you know what they're doing in lessons and in the quizzes. This is one way to run a challenge in a Mighty Network. You have a variety of great options. And the first step in any of them is to choose your topic. What are you going to do your next challenge on? I'd love to hear about it in the comments on this video. Please check out the video description for all kinds of helpful links related to what we've been talking about. If you have more questions on your Mighty Network, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel and watch my other free videos. I also invite you to join my free Mighty Network and see the ideas and the experiences I have set up for you there. I enjoy helping Mighty Network hosts with their unique situations, and I do that in private support sessions and also small group support. So thank you for watching and have fun with your network.